All right, so let me ask you this. What is the most important innovation that you've seen in the guitar community as of recent years? Like what is the big thing that you point to and you say that, that right there was the game changer. Like that was it. You see, I think there's been a ton of innovation over the last 30 years when it comes to the guitar. Sometimes I can't even comprehend like most of it, but I imagine having a conversation, a real conversation with someone from the year 1990 and you'd go up to this dude wearing like a Kurt Cobain t-shirt and you'd say, hey, in the future, you're gonna be able to take your guitar, plug straight into your computer and get these like crispy polyphia tones right out of the box, just using amp modelers. He would probably turn to you and say, what the heck is a digital amp modeler? Who the heck is this Tim Henson? What is polyphia? And three, why are you dressed like a buffoon? Yeah, the dress code in the 90s was kind of all over the place. But I think there's one more question that that dude probably would have asked if he would have understood any of the jargon that I just spouted out in the last 30 seconds. And I think that question is, if this digital world that you're talking about has gotten so good, if these amp modelers are so satisfactory, what do we even do with amps in the future? And that could be a pretty simple question depending on how you wanna phrase it. Cause you could A, just throw it out. Amps are heavy, they're loud, they can be expensive. And if you're anything like me living in this apartment, whenever your neighbors really hear you turn one on, like really try to crank one the way that it is intended to get, your neighbors do a little thing where they pull out their cell phone and they dial in a little number called 911. And as I've said before, they have done that to me multiple times and I'm starting to get a little sick of it. And for a minute, just because of the environments I've been in, living in apartments and living in dorm rooms and trying to manage my life as a guitar player, I kind of really vibe with that school of thought, right? Maybe amps just aren't worth it, but also really trying to reconcile my love for tube amps and my love for recording. But then I found out about a golden nugget that would kind of change everything. You see, I was playing a little church gig one Sunday, as I usually do, and one of my friends actually walked up to me and he told me about this thing called an attenuator. And I was like, what the heck is an attenuator? And he was like, Mike, Mike, imagine being able to get the real sound of your amp, like the true sound of it, without cutting all relations with your neighbors so that they still invite you to the next barbecue, which I kind of need them to because you boys out here trying to get jacked. Wait, wrong jacked. I need the protein. And I was like, heck yeah, man. I'm kind of in. I'm in right now. Tell me more about these attenuators. So I started out using a $20 one, which was whatever. Um, but then I really started digging in. As always, I started doing my research, doing my nerd thing with the Google machine that the kids use, that whole database situation. And I found that there was more than just attenuation on the line. There was actually cabinet emulation, guitar cabinets virtually that you can use with your actual amp, and that's when I discovered the aux. No, not that aux. It was kind of the big thing for cabinet emulation, but not only was it an attenuator, but I had heard silent recording for the first time. Yes, you heard me correctly. Blew my mind. I could finally get that glorious barbecue invitation that I had so desperately wanted. And as someone who had only used that $20 attenuator that I had told you about before, I was really all on board. So I wanted to see if this silent recording could change anything for me. To see if silent recording could change everything for me. Now, the first step, I had to acquire the merchandise. Look at what we got here. The only reason I bought a box cutter was so that people wouldn't make fun of me anymore in these videos. Step two, I had to actually learn how to use it. Some of the softwares that I've used require a little bit of a learning curve. Step three, take a break and listen to the Allman Brothers for the first time. Oh, these guys are good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> to all the Allman Brothers fans who were like, oh my gosh, you've never listened to the Allman Brothers. I'm sorry, I'm late to the party. Real talk, I see where Derek Truck gets it from. Please subscribe so I won't be late to any more parties. Step four, choose an amp that people really care about to actually hear the tone of for the first time. And I was actually gonna use that as the title of this video, but Paul David stole it and probably did it better than I ever could. All his videos are like incredible. So I'm pulling out, I'm pulling out the AC-15 for this. And step five, actually try this thing out. So I never actually get to use speaker cable, so this is gonna be a really exciting time for me. And I only have one. So I found a clean setting. It's kind of like a tweed cab with a ribbon mic on it in like, I like a semi-sized room, so.
As I do much of the time, I started off with a clean tone and I liked it. I really liked it, but it wasn't until I pushed this thing a little bit. And that was where I really heard my amp in this room for the first time. That kind of like old school dirty Vox sound that I had on the actual dirty tone, that's when I went from liking this thing to loving this thing. And I think there are basically two scales of thought that people really go into. You either are like a purist, I need to mic up my amp, I need to hear that sound, no speaker emulation can ever come through, and I need to like only use real amps and cabs. Or you're in the second school of thought where you're like, I only need to use digital amp emulation because the future is that. And I think the Oxbox is the first time where you can kind of combine the two where like the analog world meets the digital world you still have your actual tube amp and you can actually like go through that without forsaking the newness of like cab simulation and all the technology that that brings there and i was like i was like oh my gosh but the other thing is kind of with the software because i think it goes deeper like even way deeper than does it just sound good because i just heard it for the first time i was literally just like auditioning everything with my headphones before because i love the sound so much but it goes into like viability and use the fact that i can just turn the rig and everything will just load with the new mics and whatever on it it's probably the easiest to use and realist sounding like cab emulation that i've <sighs> had the pleasure of using before and i think also versatility comes into play the ability to possibly use this in stereo use it with a foot switch it's like this is what this is the change that i was talking about this is the future i've just been very concerned with the future of guitar recording and guitar playing and just being able to utilize a space like this that I've had for a while and being able to see like, can I get on board with some of this stuff and what's really gonna change. But anyway, I wanna know what you think. Have you used an Oxbox before? And like, do you think these cab emulations are really the future? So thank you so much for watching. If you wanna know anything more about my friend over here, I got it from Sweetwater. They've been a great friend of the channel. Make sure to check out the links in the description. It's one of the best ways to support the channel if that's something you wanna do, or if you're just curious about the Oxbox or any of the other guitars or tones that I got in this video, make sure to check out those links. Like and subscribe if you had a good time. And most important of all, like most important, have a fantastic day. And the wind.